All right. Got everybody here. Uh, Mr. Elliott, when you're ready. Uh, good morning. Thank you, Your Honor. May it please the court. I'm Tom Elliott here with my partner, Amy Ferrier, and uh, our co-counsel, Dave Caldavia, um, off, uh, both off camera, but in the room here. Uh, okay, let's hide these subtitles so it doesn't distract me. Uh, there are two ways, I think, to view the trial and the prior appeal here. Uh, one is that both sides' evidence of everything came in. The trial judge heard it and decided the superior, superior's evidence was more persuasive. Uh, classic trial court finding, lots of experts, so forth. Uh, the other way is to say, well, um, insurance transactions shouldn't be considered, which is what the, the Matthew Dick one opinion said. Uh, and then as the appellate, circuit appellate court found correctly, Geico had the burden of proof. And so if you're not gonna consider any of Geico's insurance transactions, it failed to meet its burden of proof. So either way, uh, superior should prevail. I think it may be a little easier to, oh yes, I'm sorry, I wanna reserve four minutes uh, for rebuttal. All um, right. Isn't it, isn't it, uh, uh, couldn't we infer from the uh, appellate opinion on, on review though, that the appellate court, circuit court made the same conclusion about superior that it didn't meet its burden. The language of the, of the appellate order says there was no comp, not competent substantial evidence. Not that there was some that they, we could consider and we weighed it and, and in the end, Superior didn't make its case, but that none of the evidence adduced by Superior complied with the test uh, in, in um, the prior appellate decision. Uh, Your Honor, uh, yes, you can read the opinion to say that, that would be, but, but they were wrong. Um, you, let me put this way, you don't get the logic the way they did. If no insurance evidence, if no insurance evidence is going to be considered, no insurance transactions are going to be considered, then Geico had nothing. Even its own brief at page 10 admits their entire 77,000 entry exhibit nine is insurance evidence. So Geico has nothing. It has the burden of proof. It loses. Superior doesn't have to do anything. It puts the bill in. It, it's proven its case. It doesn't have to offer any more evidence than that. So if we're excluding insurance evidence, Geico has the burden and it loses, and it hasn't asked for a new trial to do anything different, hasn't challenged the burden in this petition. Well, I had to beg to, beg to differ to that one statement or let, have you qualify. Putting the bill in evidence doesn't mean you have to do nothing else. You want to collect under a policy, the policy requires prevailing okay. rate. So you have to do something more. Sure. Is the bill pay the dollar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, Your Honor. I'm sorry. Of course, they met, there's, no, there's no question that all the other all the other conditions to collecting were met here. There's no challenge to that. And, and there was no finding by the circuit court there. The, you know, superior puts itself put, put in that. It's a limitation. Remember, we're talking about, they, they admit there's coverage. It's a limitation. So the burden is on Geico to show it was paying, they could pay less. And, and to prove that up, Geico didn't meet that burden if we're excluding all the insurance evidence. But we get to the same result if we look at the evidence, and it, it, let's look at the insurance, let's let's turn to that and look at the insurance. I, I can say, I think it's a little easier to, to grasp if we say, look, the trial court considered everything uh, and it decided the superiors were more persuasive. But let's look, let's jump, let me jump ahead to the insurance evidence that Geico put in. Page 38 and 39 of our initial petition summarizes this. We have a sheet, we have the pages where excerpted from the 77,000 entries, you have ex excerpted the costs for the Toyota, for the Hyundai Sonata and the Toyota Tundra. Well, let, let's assume for, for uh, could we assume for expediency's sake, correct me if I'm wrong, that we, for the sake of discussion, we can say that uh, Geico uh, adduced no evidence that was not uh, insurance based, you know, no, no transactions that were not the product of insurance coverage. That, that is my understanding, Your Honor. Yes. Okay, so we start there. I, 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 I don't want to cut you off, but maybe save time and then and say, so you're, you're, you're saying that then uh, the insured under the prior circuit court appellate case law does not have to do anything 
And all they have to do is say, hey, this is what this is what, what we want for the glass. And so that's the prevailing rate. And so your your li, 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 liability limitation, your coverage limitation doesn't apply. We win. Uh, your Honor, they, they did do more than that. They, they put in. You know, they, they put in the evidence and then yeah, they did do more, but just, yeah. just for the sake of, and, and, and I don't disagree with that, but okay. going with my first premise, my, my, my understanding of the order was that this, that, that for the sake of yeah. argument and make the other yeah. side's point that the appellate court correctly just could say none of superior's evidence met, met the standard either. It, and if your honor, keep in mind, we proved it was a covered loss. It's admitted windshields were covered. It's a covered loss. So okay. again, the question, okay. the, the only question is how much are you going to pay? Right. right. And, and if neither party puts in any evidence, then the party with the burden trying to limit it loses. That's what the burden means if you have a burden of proof. Well, and here, here's, here's, let me back up for a second. From, well, from we have other point. evidence. Well, okay. Let me, let, me, let me speak to that. For example, uh, Barrett Smith, the expert testified, his evidence was not limited to insurance transactions. In fact, when he based on him, his evidence went to what is NAG, what's the NAG's price? But, but, that wasn't, but that wasn't the trial court, that wasn't the circuit court's problem with Superior's evidence that it was insurance based, right? No, it, well, it, it, no, it, it said that. Negotiated. It was non-negotiated. What, what does that mean, Your Honor? When, when somebody sends a bill out and the other person pays it, if they thought it was too much, they would say, hey, that's too much. That is a negotiated price. If you, if you agree with it, you pay it. You know, I mean, so, but, but Mr. Superior, Mr. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, finish answering the question and then I have one for okay. you. Superior had other evidence. It had Barrett Smith's testimony, which was based on NAGS, the, the agency that prices glass. It had the evidence from three glass manufacturers. And if you look at that, if you look at just those numbers for these windshields, Geico was below it before you even get to the labor. So, and, and again, if you look at pages 38 and pages 39, this is very important. And I, I quite frankly didn't appreciate how important this was until getting ready for the argument. You can, and the so court say, that, has, say those page numbers again, what, what'd you say? 38 and 39 of our initial petition. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are charts in each of them. And the charts show a number of claims paid by GEICO. This is from GEICO's own exhibit. This is exhibit nine. And if you take, if you put the Excel spreadsheet up and then you look by claim number, which is in the left-hand column on the pages here, it will take you right to that entry. And you will see, for example, for the uh, for the Hyundai Sonata 2013 repair re replaced, not repaired in 2013, um, that Geico paid Superior only 525 when it is paying other companies 600, 700, and even 1800 dollars for the same windshield for the same year. Now, and we know. That Geico's paying that because their their representative, Ms. Eberling, at page three three one three of the record, testifies that if it is at or below the prevailing competitive price, then they this it's marked not corrected. You can look at all those; you'll see they are not corrected. So Geico's paying these numbers; it's paying more than it paid Superior. How can it say it paid Superior the prevailing competitive price? Its own evidence refutes that. Mr. Elliott, the problem with your argument is this is reversed by the appellate court below, the circuit court judges, based upon the trial judge, the county court judges applying the wrong standard. It's not being reversed for insufficient proof had the right standard been applied. They're not reweighing the evidence. Well, your, your argument is they were reweighing the evidence. That, that's you know, I, I want to tag on to that because that sort of ties in with what I wanted to ask you um, to help me with, because I, I'm really confused about what happened here. And it seems like to me in the initial circuit court decision, the, the, the circuit court threw out the policy language that, that says Geico gets to, you know, pick and and it says it's not the price set in an agreement between Geico and a particular provider. And I think the briefs, you know, articulate that in the initial circuit court, 
panel decision, they, they threw out everybody's argument about what the policy meant and they made up their own standard. And that standard said what it would cost in a competitive market at a normal arm's length non-insurance transaction. So that's what Superior had to go in to trial with and the burden of proof was put on them and they went in and they put on that kind of evidence. Then it goes up again. And this is my, how I'm reading the record. Then it goes up again in the circuit courts. Well, that's not what we meant. You didn't do it right. Well, okay, make up your mind what you want because that's exactly what you said. And here we are now on a second tier cert and I am hopelessly confused. Judge, I think that's understandable. And going back to, <laughs> back to, to, to both these questions, that's why I say, I think there are two ways to look at it. You can look at it as all the evidence comes in and the trial court found more persuasive superiors, or you can say, we're gonna go strictly under the original standard and then no insurance evidence comes in. So the only evidence that's left is, is superiors non-insurance evidence, NAGS, three glass manufacturers, Barrett Smith. That's the only evidence. And because GEICO has a burden of proof and it has no admissible evidence, it loses. So either way we get to the same place. I, I do think, and, and you mentioned we're here on second tier. I, I'd like to speak to that briefly. Yes, please put it in that standard. Yes, yes, Your Honor, because what we have here is a failure under Caclamanos, we know that the failure to observe the essential requirements of the law is a failure to apply the correct law, okay? The circuit court here did not apply the correct law because it is, and it's a profound, as this court said in Chakra and the supplemental authority we filed from last year, profound error amounting to clear departure from the essential requirements of the law. Reweighing the evidence qualifies as that. We've cited a number of cases to that effect. Saying, <laughs> saying to one side, we're gonna consider one side's evidence because the, the, the circuit court appellate opinion treats Geico's evidence like it's fine. Because if, if it hadn't, Geico loses because the burden is on it. So you can't say, I'm going to take the evidence from one side and the same type of evidence from the other side and disregard one side's. You can't do that. Let me ask you this. So to keep them separate, which you're probably going to do, I, but I want to make sure of it. So let's say, like, if I read the face of the opinion, I could conclude that they did not reweigh evidence. Now, I'm not, I'm not getting to your point that there was, there was evidence from Superior, but that is not the same. The argument that, that, that Superior actually adduced evidence that did meet the standard is not the argument that the trial court reweighed evidence. I could conclude the trial court did not weigh, it, reweigh evidence. It just found that neither, neither party adduced any admissible evidence and they still, but the point is, and I, I know about your point about the burden, but then it is a separate argument you're trying to have us reach, I think, which is that they were wrong about their finding that superior evidence did not meet the standard. In other words, can we say they didn't read the evidence and still reverse on, on second tier cert based on your argument that they were wrong about su their, their conclusion that superior evidence didn't meet the standard? Yes, Your Honor, because if, if you if it's not reversed, then what you have standing is you have Geico putting in insurance evidence that gets accepted and Superior putting in insurance evidence and non-insurance evidence that doesn't get accepted. You can't do that. That is a denial of due process. The, uh, so you know, Geico weird? never challenged- Wait a minute, I wanna stop. Is it, is it a denial of due process or that's also a third argument you're raising for, I think, for, uh, for um, the Department of the Central Crimes of the Law, which is that not only was the court wrong about the, the conclusion that superior's evidence didn't meet the standard, but now it's a denial of due process because, go ahead. Well, denial of due process and miscarriage of justice go to the second element on the second tier cert. So okay, I, was, I was sort of rolling right. into that. Yeah, I mean, right. you, you, you can't, I mean- it, Well, well I wanna talk about, I wanna talk about departure, not-, not Yes, um, okay. Well, Your Honor, it would be a, it would be a depart, there is, there is no case that it would be a departure. There is no case that says, we're gonna consider side A's evidence and then side B, the same, the same exact type of evidence is gonna be excluded and not considered. You, you, you can't do that. That's a departure from the essential requirements of law. That is a fundamental error. I'd like to ask- yeah, It's fundamental you, because- Because you can't just deny one side's evidence when you're letting okay, the exact same asking, evidence from the other I'm side. I'm just trying to, is it because it's a due process violation? Or is it well, because- it is, so, it is that also. 
It is okay, that so also. What, the error is that, okay. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to ask you what the exact well, departure is. What are we departing from? What law are we departing from? Well, you're departing from the from the from the law that says you don't reweigh what was in front of the trial court. And I come back but to I've that already, because I'm to eliminate that very no, no, well, Your Honor, <laughs> with, all, with all due respect, I don't think you can eliminate that here because okay. Superior right. had other evidence. It had the nags. It had the three glass manufacturers. It had Barrett Smith. It had all okay, this okay, evidence. Wait, but, but if we if we disagree that that evidence met the standard, then we're left with nobody adduced any competent substantial evidence there was no relevant evidence admitted well if if we're going to disregard all of superior's evidence you would be there but then geico has the burden which the circuit court correctly held and geico loses but would, which, you, would you would you agree that you could read i read the order to to infer that they said none of superior's evidence was admissible because none was relevant under the standard leaving aside whether they were correct about that that's the way i read the order so if you're if you're, you're telling me well and i'm not necessarily disagreeing geico's evidence didn't meet the standard under dick one either then we're left with an order that essentially says nobody induced any relevant evidence and if you read it that way and you say geico had the burden of proof geico loses and and it would be a it would be a profound error to say that the party with the burden of proof gets to win when nobody puts any evidence on because that's clearly and, wrong. And, and, it, and I forgot one other thing in my parade of horribles that's confused me about this case is looking at what Geico argued initially to the circuit court. They argued that we get to pick. Which the, which the circuit court and the previous panel had already rejected. They went back and just argued for what's in their policy. So the same, they, they're making different arguments. And your honor, it's a little, I, I agree. And I would add to that, that another problem, another error, another uh, uh, departure from the central requirements of law that the, that the circuit court did is it ruled on something Geico didn't even argue. Right. It ruled for them, which again is a departure and a violation of our due process rights because we get to respond to these things. Well, that's the question I have because I read that order that Judge Stevens signed and it said Superior is entitled to a new trial. Superior didn't file the appeal. Geico did. So they're saying Superior didn't file the appeal, but you win. I, I've never seen an appellate court reverse something that wasn't appealed. Superior didn't wanted the trial, the trial court to affirm the county court judgment. Is that true or false? Superior did not want. Superior didn't win in the county court? Correct. Superior lost in the county. Okay. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I've got, gotten confused now. Superior won in the county court. It wanted to be affirmed. So why did what? the trial court give a new trial to Superior who didn't ask for a new trial? Okay. Well, your Honor, I think they were trying to be fair because they said we've corrected the burden of proof, which they did do. They, That's, they, they corrected the burden of proof and, and, and Superior might have done something different in that light. Yeah, uh, but normally you know, if you don't carry a burden of proof, you lose. You lose on a burden of proof. You the burden correct. of proof you fail to carry. This should be a loss, even though procedurally, they, I think the appellate court below said you didn't follow Matthew Dick 1. You didn't apply the proper standards, therefore you get a, we're going to give Superior a redo, but Superior doesn't want to redo, redo. So this whole thing, I think, procedurally is a is a jumble of worms. It's it's it's, it's, a, it's a mess. But Mr. Mr. Elliot, um, you have your rebuttal time left. Uh, Your Honor, I uh, I will save that then and just say we ask that the court reverse, not the burden finding because that's correct. But reverse and reinstate the trial court's judgment. This should be at an end. This is going. This has been up twice now. Um, this court now has the jurisdiction because there are no more county or circuit court appeals. Uh, so we'd ask that you reverse, um, affirm on the burden, reverse in favor of the merits for superior. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Sears. Don't forget to unmute. Ms. Sears, you need to unmute, please. Am go. I, can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. It's, it's good to be here this morning and may it please the court. I'm Leah Ward Sears and I represent government 
Employees Insurance Company, also known as GEICO. These are two out of thousands of windshield repair cases in Florida's courts today. These cases yeah, are you know, Ms. Sears, I don't, I don't want to interrupt you, but we have limited time here, and I think yes. we're familiar with that and okay. that, that, that setting and and, All and right. so I'll that the case raises. But procedurally, you know, I think as we've all articulated, this case is a bit of a nightmare. Um, and so if you could help us understand procedurally what's going on here. And I, I would, that, I would love to. Our standard of review, that would be okay. so helpful. I, I'd love to do that. Let me, so let me just jump, jump in. The way we see it, the difference of opinion after the second appearance before a trial judge in this case are, there are three differences of opinion. You know, I'm going to try to break it down as easy as I can, even just for me to understand and articulate. The first one is whether Superior produced any evidence whatsoever that the price it charged for windshield repair was the prevailing competitive price as the circuit court defined that term in the earlier appeal of this case. That's Matthew Dick one. And the question to that is no, the circuit court so, so was assuming correct. That to be true, assuming that to be true, and under my hypothetical, I pose Mr. Elegant, and nobody carried their burden. Another way of saying it, and Mr. Elegant can respond to that on rebuttal. <laughs> but in other words, nobody adduced any any relevant evidence to the question of whether that's a competitive prevailing competitive price. Does why shouldn't Geico lose? Because it had the burden. Well, uh, nobody found that Geico didn't carry a, a burden of proof. Remember that uh, the burden of proof was on Superior in the trial court. The circuit court said that burden of proof should be on Geico. So what the circuit court came in and did was, oh my gosh, since the burden of proof was on Superior in the trial court, and we're saying it that it should be on Geico, this is a big mess, and we're going to ask. So, in other words, what you're saying, what you're saying is, Superior should have lost. Uh, for, uh, should, it didn't. Superior have, should have it, lost. That Superior should have lost. It showed no relevant evidence. To, it didn't reweigh the evidence, Your Honors. It was there was no evidence, no relevant evidence. It was almost as if they brought in evidence of a of a changing a tire or something like that. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm being, but but you have to have the relevant evidence. In court. Let's walk through it then, if you don't mind for the slow kid in the class. At, at the trial court, the the, 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 the the appellate court found the trial court improperly had placed the burden on superior. And then, and then, but the, the circuit and court the, did. But then faulted superior for the evidence that it didn't have the burden to put in to begin with. Well, and that, then it corrected the now? it corrected now the I'm, error. I'm, now I'm sorry, confused about what I said. I, now uh, Judge Kelly made me confused about what I said. I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize. Okay. Jack. okay. I, I okay. think I I think I misspoke because I used well. What I did was I used the term appellate court, and I, and I will uh, forgo that term. So the so, so, circuit the circuit court you. found, and it's appellate capacity that the. Uh, that the, that the trial court, so the county court, had improperly placed the burden on Superior. Exactly. And it found that the Superior had, and the circuit court found Superior had failed to meet a burden it never should have had. So what was right. the circuit court suppo supposed to do? Should the circuit court have said, well, Geico had the burden. And so what you're saying is the circuit court is Came to the issue of whether Geico carried the burden. The, the circuit, for the, I mean, for the first time, I mean, this, who has the burden's been all over the map? So who, the circuit court decided, and I, I, I do hope this court will finally clarify it, but it's been some county courts say uh, plaintiffs, some say defendant. It's all over the map. So the circuit court decided that it was the Geico had the, the burden of proof. And that it also found that, that Superior presented no relevant evidence. There was no finding, although we believe that Geico presented plenty of evidence that, that I actually met the burden of proof. 
Well, but let me we ask didn't you have the burden. Of Wait, we hang didn't on have the burden. I'm, I'm sorry. Hang on, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. And that, there's a lag, but let me ask you about oh, yes. that because as I read what the test was supposed to be, the test is that the service, what the service would cost in a competitive market in a normal arms length non-insurance transaction and all Geico's evidence related to insurance transactions. Okay, so it's very interesting. And Geico then argued that it should only relate to insurance uh, okay. transactions because what our policy limitation says is Geico gets to choose. Okay, so let me just try to walk through this piece. The 13th Circuit opined in Dick 1, the first day case, that the right. prevailing competitive price in GEICO's limitation of, limitation of liability policy was not ambiguous. And this decision, Superior did not appeal. The court said that the price GEICO was required to pay for windshield repairs had to be both prevailing and competitive. The 13th Circuit opined that the test for prevailing competitive price is, and I'll just read this, what the windshield replacement service would cost in a normal arm's length non-insurance transaction. A normal a non-insurance transaction isn't just any insurance transaction because all of this is about insurance. A non-insurance transaction is really, if you think about it, a transaction where no one is subject to an agreement on pricing. No one has a, it's sort of an in-network, out-network, affiliate, non-affiliate. It's, it's not, not no insurance. You. You're, plowing, you're plowing ground we've heard. And we read Excuse about, me. Okay. You're following a lot of ground not, that we're familiar with. I want okay. to ask another question to follow up okay. something I asked earlier. Geico was the appellant below. Get to the circuit court. They reverse saying Superior had the wrong burden. Let's assume Geico didn't carry its burden like it should have, right? You, and Superior gets a new trouble. The way you can make sense of this judgment on page five, and say, instead of saying Superior has a new trial, did the court make a typographical error and mean to say, Geico's entitled to a new trial? Because Geico was no. below. So I believe Geico that. A new trial? No, I think Superior was entitled to a okay. new trial, but Geico will have the burden of proof, at, Your Honor, at that. So, at was that Superior, new trial. did Superior get a judgment in the county court? Did Superior win their case? Did they get money in their favor awarded? It did. Okay, so. And that was reversed in the circuit court. So you're you're agreeing the wrong burden was applied, correct? I I am agreeing that the circuit court decided that the wrong burden was applied. So what I'm saying is, in order to make sense in your favor of this judgment, Geico gets a new new trial is what they should have said, not Superior. Superior doesn't want a new trial. Geico wants a new trial because Superior put on the wrong burden. It should have been on Geico, but. That's like pulling on your sword. They didn't, they're not contesting it at this point. Your, your Honor, I actually believe that we, Geico's position is that we presented enough evidence that uh, Geico could have won, regardless of who had the burden. I mean, we had, uh, you know, Superior presented no, no evidence. All their, all their evidence were proposed pricing. Well, can we stay on the remedy, staying on the remedy for a minute? staying on the remedy okay. for a minute that Judge Valenti okay. was talking about. Let me ask you okay. this. Was the choice between a new trial or Superior losing, or was the choice between a new trial and Geico, uh, and Geico losing? Was it not the former? In other I words, that's that why it was characterized as a new trial for Superior, because the only what? logical reading of the, of the order is that the, the dilemma when it came to the exercise of the circuit court's uh, discretion with regard to remedy was between entering judgment in favor of Geico or right. a new trial. Right, I would have entered, a, if I'm not on the bench anymore, but I would have entered a, a judgment for Geico because Geico had plenty was there of- any way, Was there any way to read the order to, to, to uh, deduce or that that there was a dilemma uh, posed to the circuit court based on its reasoning that, uh, that between a new trial and entering a judgment in favor of superior. There was no way that, that, that a new, oh, 
I'm sorry. Repeat the question, Your Honor. In other words, is there any way to read the order to believe that the the, the remedial question posed to the, the circuit court was between a new trial and a judgment entered in favor of the superior? I don't. I I can't. Well, I think what happened, I I mean, it seems like to me what happened both times this went to the circuit court is the circuit court just did what it wanted without regard to what the parties were arguing and asking for it just went rogue, which is what I mean, that's, you know, that's the way I'm reading the record. It, It makes it very difficult on both of you and it makes it really difficult on us to try to understand which I want to go back, Ms. Sears, because you started yes. on something I, I really appreciated because I asked you to help, you know, clarify where we are here. And you said there were three points of disagreement and you got to point okay. one and we, Thank you. we went off on questions. I would like to know those three points. The first the point okay, the one three, was that they, the, about the, the, the point one. The point one, I'm sorry, I would have let you finish. No, I, go ahead. Let me hear you three Okay. Points. The first, the first point I wanted to talk about is sufficiency of the evidence, and I've already said that I thought that the, we did that the, one. Okay, we did that. Just tell me um, what points two and three are, so I'll forget but, about. Okay, the two uh, other uh, questions were: Did the circuit court wrongly grant Superior a new trial for its its remedy? Uh, the answer here again is is no. And I don't know of an appellate court that doesn't have the power on its own to order a new trial if it believes that that's the appropriate remedy to unscrew things that were messed up from either the trial court or the circuit court. Well, um, if I'm, go ahead with point three then. Okay. And I, the third, I don't have a question, but finish. With okay. And three. the third court, the third issue relates to attorney's fees and did the trial court okay. properly grant GEICO conditional attorney's fees subject to GEICO prevailing in the case? The answer to that question is yes. If GEICO ultimately prevails, the company is entitled to attorney's fees, but yes, it does have to comply with all the other necessary statutory requirements, including the offer of judgment statute and the proposal of, for settlement rule. Real quick on that, what does it harm Geico to have uh, to remand it for a more, 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 more a clearer order that it's not based con- the contingency is not prevailing party, but rather compliance with the offer of judgment statute? I- I'm sorry, Your Honor. Well, there's no reason harm, why. What does it harm Geico if to remand for a clarification of the fee o- o- award? To entitle uh, Geico to fees only based on compliance. There, there's no reason. Statute. No, I don't think there's any. I don't think anyone really disagrees with the uh, the attorneys. Right. Go, go, on. We're, go on. We're not go really on. disagreeing with it. Okay, go on with your next point. Okay. Okay. Like, we don't well, disagree just, with I it. I want to go back to your your point about you know the the remedy of the new trial, and you're like, well, you know, the, the court can do that. Well, you know, maybe, um, but I, I think. You know, the argument that that wasn't appropriate is it had never been asked for. So it wasn't within the range of things the parties had asked, either party. The trial court just created this remedy. And, the circuit court. And, yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. The circuit, the circuit court. court. And, right. I'm so confused. And, okay. um, and Superior had no opportunity to be heard on that. I mean, it, that just came out of the blue, the same way in the first, in Dick 1, they came out of the blue with a, with a standard that I still think that they don't, they haven't, they don't understand. <laughs> I mean, I still don't understand what the standard of proof is. But so you're but, not, but, but what, you're I not mean, what about the argument that Superior's making? It is we didn't get to weigh in on that. So that you're, I, never it's, it seems, Your Honor, you're not happy with, the Dick one decision. The no, I, decision. I have no, I just, I mean, I think it created an issue because, you know, it, 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 it created a test that nobody had argued for. So the parties were stuck with it, but the it's parties the had different case. ideas about how to prove that right. based on it's, their differing it, interpretations of the policy language. Right. Well, Dick one, I would call that, the, no, nevertheless, even though you are not satisfied with it, the law of the case. So when it 
thing. Right. And it went down. Right. Yeah. So when it went back down. Well, I'm sure Geico's the, not satisfied with it either, are they? <laughs> no, because Geico. Oh, we were unsatisfied. We just, you know, most uh, clients, most companies, they just want certainty. They just want to know where to go, what to do, how to, uh, how to do my it. comment. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, Sorry. okay. And, and the, we'll, we can work with whatever as long as we know what it is, okay? And that's what we thought we were doing. So when we went back uh, down well, to the circuit court well, and it, all if, the... Oh, now, if Dick Wine said non-insurance evidence, and what Geico really did is it went in and proved what it would have to prove if the circuit court originally had accepted Geico's argument about what its limited liability provision meant. That's right. I mean, that that's the key. Right. So you it, it you doesn't mean, it doesn't mean, mean but, but your your honor, non-insurance transaction does, it, uh, again, it's Geico's position that a non-insurance transaction is a transaction where the, that's not subject to a pricing agreement where like a, a safe life type agreement, it's a non-affiliate where you can so have a transaction. Where you, otherwise, ahead. we don't, none of us need to be, everything's an insurance transaction. I don't so you're think, saying since, since Dick one uh, kind of ignored the, uh, since Dick one kind of ignored the uh, policy language, Geico decided, well, we'll just kind of ignore the uh, language of Dick one. <laughs> that was a joke. I'm allowed to make a joke. Okay. In okay. I mean, well, I, you know, I think that's one way you can read the record, you know, Judge Atkinson. I, I, I sort of read it that way myself. But let me ask you this, Ms. Sears, because yes. I still am very confused after reading Dick Wan and reading, you know, everything. What, what, how would, what would Superior, what evidence would Superior have to introduce okay. to meet the test, although now Geico has the burden, but, but what, well, what evidence, so, you, what so evidence, so, what evidence, tell me whoever, whoever, Geico or Superior, what would be the evidence that would satisfy? Well, uh, the evidence is you, all of its uh, 77,000 actual transactions with 333 different non-affiliate, which means non-insurance, glad glass repair shop. We've already introduced that kind of evidence. We will have the burden of proof. And we've shown, if you just look at the charts, that sometimes the, that, that what we're paying falls within that group of people. Uh, I mean, uh, of the 274 shops in that group, uh, Geico's parameters were met 50% of the time. 82% of them are met 90% of the time. So, you know, it's Geico's limitation of liability. Geico, it's so Geico, Geico is limiting its liability. It can't be whatever uh, uh, a, a windshield company decides or proposes to charge. And quite frankly, that's why the circuit court was unhappy with the sufficiency of the evidence here. If you really look very closely at all the evidence, or even not that closely, it's clear that all, even the survey evidence, all of the evidence are proposed prices by windshield companies that have been involved in transactions or have been negotiated with nobody. So now you're, now you're arguing, which it's not... I don't Who negotiates to... things. You ask, what does it cost? Well, and you either pay it or you don't. That's well, that's you you pay it or you don't. That gives like you freedom. Down, that's a not... negotiation. That's a transaction, Your Honor. So I, I'm not saying it's not impertinent, but now you seem to be arguing the merits of what of, of Geico's uh, of Geico's evidence. But here, but I have a question for you. Going back to my joke and, and making it less jocular, you know, okay. two wrongs don't make a right if. The first wrong was committed by a circuit court whose, whose opinion is law of the case, and we can't do anything about that. <laughs> and so whether we think it was wrong to begin with or not, uh, you're, now you're saying now you're saying you're going to go back down there and you're going to adduce the same exact evidence and tell the next county court uh, uh, judge that this is non, these are non-insurance transactions. And do we need to be, agree with you or not in order to uh, uh, deny the petition here? In other words, do we need to agree with you or not, whether that complies with Dick 1? 
Does it matter? Yes. But in, in this in this pipeline of cases, yes. But uh, I mean, this is the District Court of Appeals. I'm, the, there are many, many other cases coming. And you have the, uh, I, I believe that you're over the circuit court. So yeah, you can. Okay, okay, we're over the circuit court. Let me ask yeah. you, I'm yeah. sorry to derail okay. this, but I, I wanted to ask uh, uh, your opposing counsel as well as, we, okay, we're over the circuit court and we're in a strange new world of, of jurisdictional. It is uh, different. Right. Yeah. Uh, but but what authority do we have to second guess law of the case in this case, even if we disagree with the Dick One's interpretation of the policy? My understanding is you can't in this, you know, in the pipeline in this particular case, but uh, you have all Florida to deal with. OK, or at least your district and then and and what what have you. So if you're not happy with the theory of Dick One, there are other cases, thousands okay, so, of other cases. Okay, so Ms. 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 Sears, Ms. Sears yes. I'm sorry. Thank oh, I'm you. Sorry, and you are at the end of your time. Do you want to, okay. did you have a question, Judge Atkinson? I'm sorry. Uh, uh, no, she, she, I believe she answered my question and, and, and okay. I don't have, have time okay. for another. So thank you. Okay, very good. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you all thank you. very much for the opportunity. Thank you. To thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Elegant. Thank you, Your Honor. Going to the remedy question, Geico inver invited this error on burden of proof by arguing county court cases that were contrary to the Florida Supreme Court and DCA cases. So they invited the error and they never asked, it never asked for a new trial. So, well, let me let me ask this: What what, what is this? Are you taking aim at your foot and perhaps pulling the trigger? I mean, couldn't 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 we couldn't if you want to if you think it was the wrong remedy? What would the only other solution be if we agreed with the circuit court on the merits? The only other solution would be for the circuit court to have remanded for entry of judgment in Geico's favor. Well, why 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 are you so insistent that there shouldn't be a new trial when the only other alternative, according to the logic of the opinion? Keep in mind, this is a separate argument making about remedy. Geico gets a judgment in their favor. Your Honor, Geico doesn't get a judgment in their favor because that's reweighing the evidence and it's violating the burden of proof. Well, what if we so, disagree with you? The, and, but we'd agree with you on the on the on the on the, the on the fact that the trial court or the circuit court didn't have a, a discretion to implement the remedy, or that they improvidently exercised that discretion. Doesn't then we have to say Geico wins in the in the uh, trial the county court? Your Honor, I guess if you're asking, would I rather have a, a new trial than have Geico win? Sure. But Geico doesn't win when it had the burden of proof and it put on no evidence that qualified. We did put on. They keep saying we had no, no evidence it wasn't insurance. That's just wrong. We did. But there and, were two and let appeals me, to the circuit court, right? I mean, I'm Geico, sorry, what? There were two appeals to the circuit court. Geico files an appeal. Superior files what the judge said was a protective cross appeal. So the word yes, appeal. yes, we cross appealed on the burden of proof. Okay. And you won on that? Yes. In the circuit court, yes. Yes. And that's so correct. That, so, so let me ask you this. So, okay, so I, I still going back to your, your arguments are well argued yet, I, yet from, from, from my purposes, I need to distinguish between them. Okay, so the there is the, we re-weighing evidence. I think you might be conflating them. Tell me why, if we don't, it, tell, tell me why, if I read this order as not a reweighing of the evidence, but as a conclusion, when let's just say, in, for the sake of being fair to its period, and say, let's, let's say it, it supports the conclusion that neither party adduced any evidence whatsoever that was relevant under the standard of Dick One. Um, what is the departure from the essential requirements of the law on second tier cert? What law was not, what what a law was misapplied? What law was, what, how did the circuit court apply the wrong law? It correctly found that Geico had the burden of proof and then it didn't hold Geico to that burden if you're eliminating all the evidence. Okay. Put the burden on us. So that is a departure. You can't say the party with the burden of proof wins when nobody puts any admissible evidence on it. He didn't say when, it, but it did, they, he didn't say it wins. The circuit court didn't say it wins, it said well, a new trial. Well, new trial. Okay, what, <laughs> I stand corrected. You can't say that the party who had the burden and didn't put any evidence on doesn't lose. <laughs> the party who has the burden and doesn't put the evidence on loses. I and mean, that's fundamental. And, and again, 
I think, as I said at the beginning, I think you can look at it either way. Look at it all, look at the burden. But in the seven, you heard a reference to 77,000 transactions. Look at pages 38 and 39. Those are the only, th those are the transactions that have been called out. There may be some others, but those are the ones that deal with these two windshields. And they show conclusively, Geico's own evidence, that it was not paying the prevailing competitive price when it paid superior. And we know that from its evidence. That is reweighing the evidence. That evidence was in front of judge, the trial court judge as part of the evidence. So that's reweighing. But what, one, one final comment I guess I would make, because you heard a whole of references. Muted. Pardon? I, I was muted, muted again. I, I, I just want to, and I think this has come up in everybody's questions, and just make sure, like, there's this argument, I think, that maybe we're not all understanding. You keep saying it's that is reweighing the evidence, as opposed to concluding that they use the wrong standard in adducing evidence, that, that this doesn't meet the test we articulated in DIC 1. That's not what we told you to do. You, you put in this evidence, this evidence doesn't meet our standard. How is that, how is that reweighing? You know, Your Honor, Geico didn't challenge admissibility of any evidence that Superior put on. So that, that yeah, evidence came in. Okay, so that evidence is there. And you have this, you now have the appellate court saying, even though there was no objection to it, and it came in, and the trial judge relied on it, we're going to just ignore it. You can't do now, that. Let, let me, okay, well, you know, and that this sort of goes back to one of my other concerns is the way I read the record, and I, you know, forgive me, I don't know that you've argued, or maybe you, you, maybe you haven't argued that one of the departures from the essential requirements of law here is that the circuit court failed to follow the law of the case in DIC 1. That's not an argument you're making, is it? I do not think we have said that. Okay, because I keep thinking that the circuit court, you know, just never mind what we said in DIC 1, we're, we're going to articulate a new standard of proof here. But if that's not being argued, that's just my... That's, I, I, that's sort of the way I'm reading the record. And it seems like to me, you know, that might have been a cause of some confusion to both parties in trying to discern what evidence they need to put on. Anyway, you need to conclude. So yes, you've got Your Honor. I, 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 as I say, I, again, looking at it with all the evidence or looking at it with just the non-insurance evidence and the burden, Superior should have won. There, there was a comment about wanting certainty and all these other cases that are coming just for what it's worth for the court. There won't be a ton more cases coming because Geico has changed its policy language. And you can see the new language at page 8921 of this record. It knew its language wasn't doing what it wanted. So the parameters it was applying, it has now put expressly into the policy. So these cases are going to go away. So get us through this one, and I think we'll be on the road to recovery. <laughs> get us did, did through not, this one. Did, did it not think it was the language is doing what it what it uh, was supposed to, or did it think that the courts just weren't implementing it as written? Uh, that's, a, I, that's a rhetorical question. <laughs> I, I couldn't speak to that, Your Honor, but I, I know they went to the, to the Department of Insurance, whatever, and got it changed. That's at 8921. Thank you both. Thank you. This, was, this is a super interesting case, and we appreciate your arguments. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Uh, the next case.